Just like fashion, home decor trends, they come and they go. If you are someone who's feeling the itch to change a few things up, it's helpful to know what's up and coming in the design world. And today we're excited to learn from designer Lauren Oviet, who just got back from the largest furnishings trade show in the world. I love when you do this for us. It's almost as glamorous as fashion week. It feels that way. I want to go one day and just tuck myself in your suitcase and it just is, peek out at all it, of the it's beautiful just things. It's a wild ride. It's so much fun. And we see so many things. It is the job of these vendors and these fabric houses to give us something new every six months. This is called High Point, mm -hmm. and you describe it as kind of a glittering city. Yeah, it's actually a really small town that just overturns with 100,000 people in April and October. Amazing. And all of the best furniture vendors, accessory companies, lighting, rugs, anything you can imagine for home decor is shown and showcased and introduced uh, during those markets. How much of this is fun for you and how much of this is work for you? What's the percentage divide? Uh, this past market may be 80-20. Okay. It's always fun in some way because I love to see things that I've never seen before. Yes. I did a little project specific shopping this time, which is a little stressful, but totally rewarding to be able to sit in, see, touch, feel these new things that I'm excited to put in my projects. Well, while you were doing that, you were scouting for us mm -hmm. six of the biggest trends you saw at High Point that you think the at-home woman will be mm -hmm. excited to incorporate into her home in the coming months. First, you saw a lot of color, and I'm going to name a few and give us your reaction. Aubergine. Yes, this aubergine, this like plum cranberry red. We've seen Rich. it coming on for a few seasons. And these are my own photos, so forgive the showroom lighting, but yeah, a lot of this kind of moody, royal tone, lamps, solids on chairs with welting. This is a tough color for me. It was shown really well, um, but I think it's hard to get on board with, and I think it's kind of a trendy color in my opinion. I feel like it would tire quickly. Like mm -hmm. I love it at first mm -hmm. glance, at first blush, but would we get sick of that pretty fast? Yeah, I think the best way to use this color, I mean, Yay for those that have loved and always loved purple. Sure. But I think the best way to use this is in a guest room on a chest or a dresser, you know, kind of downplay it as a neutral. If you find a really great bedding set or decorative pillow that incorporates this color, it's a lovely change from blue or green, but I just don't think it has the staying power to go full room mm -hmm. scale, you know, full design with this tone. What color would it play with? I mean, neutrals, obviously, but mm -hmm. if I have an existing palette, how mm -hmm. would I know if an aubergine throw pillow might work with that color? Well, wheel? I think it goes great with those kind of straw, neutral, warm tones. Okay. It looks really well with its own color, like okay. lighter purples and um, kind of those pastels. So kind of staying monochrome mm. with that aubergine cranberry color in shades of its own tone. Which again is a commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of commitment, you saw a lot of yellow. Yeah, yeah. And that would take, you're more excited than I thought you well, were. Well, it's fun to see it. And at market, it's, it's usually done really well. Sure. So it's fun to see it. But yellow for me is a very polarizing color. I can't can say be. over the last 15 years that I have ever had a client who said, I must have yellow. <laughs> Give me yellow. And I think the reason it's hard is because depending on what's already at play and depending on the exposure of your room, yellow can be very hard. Overtaking? Yes. I mean, there's not a lot of people that wear yellow. It's true. Sometimes that's where we start. And it feels, when I think of yellow, I think juvenile. We're seeing mm -hmm. it in richer tones that mm -hmm. I guess could play in a sophisticated space. Yeah. So the best way to use yellow, in my opinion, is um, solid, solid with the fabric choices okay. and pairing it with lighter tones like antique, um, almost like a French country look. So antique washed woods, lighter wood tones, and whites and ivories. So help me see it how you see it. Why no yellow in pattern? Because I think it becomes, again, too juvenile okay. and too fussy. So if we're going to like yellow, I think we inject it with a solid, and that really helps to sell the concept. But if you pair it with blue, then it becomes a little French country. That's and that true. is kind of exciting. We're seeing a little bit of resurgence of kind of a European aesthetic especially here in Utah with Midway and some of these kind of outcrops of vacation homes. So I like it paired with blue as well. We'll end the color portion of this conversation mm -hmm. by celebrating green. You saw a lot of gorgeous green. A lot of beautiful green and blue. And green has kind of been overtaking like our classic blue and white. Oh. So I feel like the places where I used to really see these blue and white schemes, now I'm seeing green. Okay. But I'll tell you the color to avoid is the emerald. It's just too strong. So you're gonna look for jade mm -hmm. and kind of the silver sage color mm. and even into like the lighter almost pastel grayed out antique celery green but this color is really beautiful and you know why it works is because it is nature's neutral 
Mm. So if we are looking for tones in this jade, silver, sage color, it is really soothing. It's very soft. We're showing you a few different ways that it was used. It's pretty. The ways that I like it best, again, paired with neutrals. So like a warm walnut table. Um, the stripe is interesting paired with the ivory, but then kind of go a little masculine with like this darker, stronger wood tone, kind like of a it. clean line. I like it. Yeah, again, it's a really nice departure from those that said, okay, blue and white is not my thing. This can work for them. Let's move into emerging design styles that you saw at High Point this year, and you're mm -hmm. gonna have to define these for me. Okay. Because some of these I'm a little clueless as to what sure. that would even look like. Greek Revival? Greek Revival, I love this. Okay. You I, do? I studied historical architecture when I was in design school, so I love to see this trend. It's super classic. So you'll see like actual, forms of the Roman bust. You see the Greek key on the urn, the urn itself, the obelisks, the columns on this table, the detail that surrounds. And it does feel Grecian. You may not really understand it, but all of these forms are, they have a nod to this old Greek and Roman, which is so entirely historical. And it always, to me, will work in some way, but I love to see it kind of coming back in. It looks very chic, doesn't it? It does. I can tell you're giddy. Did it surprise mm -hmm. you to see so much of this? Yes, because I think for so long it was like this California modern and yeah. it's like rustic and coastal and beachy and yeah. edgy. That's not for me. We've grown up. I like, it's formal, but I also think like, so maybe, you know, the older generation would say, oh yeah, I used to have those. But also if you pair it with the right like kind of modern touches, uh -huh. it can become a little bit like eclectic, chic, and really very formal, which I think is great. I'm hiccuping on the word edge. That's not it, but it's powerful. It yes, feels it is. It feels like it would give a room power. It totally does, and it resonates because again, it's like those forms that we know. Yes. Like we see them. We if we see them in architecture, we know these shapes. Let's swing to the other side of it. Equestrian. Mm -hmm. Equestrian. And Equestrian. this was kind of fun too. I mean, anyone who loves that classic Ralph Lauren aesthetic will love this. So is this Western? No, it's more like English um, horseback riding. Okay. Okay, so warm Cheerios. Yeah, plaids, it's European. Um, it's, you know, it's maybe East Coast, kind of that East Coast fox hunt aesthetic. Mm. But camel tones and warm walnuts. I love the hit of brass and black in the metal. But it's really, again, like very chic. It's very warm. Mm -hmm. And it will resonate with anyone who has a leather sofa or has loved following. Has a husband <laughs> has who a, has a leather yeah. sofa. Yeah, or like <laughs> likes to hang, you know, <laughs> mounts on their wall, so to speak. Yeah. But this was kind of fun because, again, I feel like it's always been an aesthetic, right? People yeah. have always kind of loved like that Ralph Lauren look. But to see it kind of coming back really overtly, um, in this way was cool. I want to like this. A part of mm -hmm. me wants to, but I don't think I can get mm -hmm. on board. Yeah. Well, it's it's a little old school. Yeah, right? a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Lauren's looking at me like, yeah, we just decorated I mean... your living room in, <laughs> in coastal, more, more blue. So yeah, not my thing. Uh, warm neutrals. Let's celebrate yes. this to end our discussion. Yes. So I love this because for so many years we departed Tuscan and we went for gray and white. And now we're seeing just this warm, inviting palette of camel, cafe au lait, ivory white. It's very beautiful, it's very easy. It's easy to go coastal or traditional or French or European with this color palette. I think the thing to note here is that because you're taking color out of the equation, the focus is on fabric and texture and finish. Mm. So you have to, in order to make this work, you have to consider the wood grain on the table or the stone that you're bringing in, the decorative accents like your, the frame on your art or the finish on your lamp, it has to be exciting. Um, brass tones are beautiful, even polished nickel tones and these kind of antique iron tones work. But when you're designing this way, it may fall flat if you're not considering that next level. Your words and your description, always mm -hmm. so on point and so good. And because we're cautious about the word trends around here, mm -hmm. and I know you feel the same, we'll just emphasize that just because something is on trend in the moment doesn't mean you have to love it. What is the key, Lauren, in conclusion, of, of choosing something that you will like for a long time? Yes, well, I mean, I... As I go on in my career, I just think trends are trends. That's why they call them that. Like baby tees and boot cut jeans are not for everyone. <laughs> and the same goes with home design. Yeah. I said, you know, they have to, it's their job to show us things that are exciting. But I think if you always choose the things that you love and you buy smart, then you'll always have a beautiful home. Mm. We talk a lot about the aesthetic of 
the exterior and the architecture of your home matching what you bring in. So I think if you listen to what the house is telling you architecturally and then incorporate the things that make you happy, mm -hmm. then you'll always have a place that resonates with you. You've got some great projects going right now. Mm -hmm. I know some fun client requests were fulfilled, mm -hmm. I'm sure, at High Point. How can people connect with you and see your beautiful work? Well, I love to share what I'm doing kind of on a daily basis on my Instagram, so find me there. And then I have a website at laurenoviet.com. Thank you for that insider peek, things we can get excited about now and look for in the month to come. We will link you to Lauren's website and Instagram page from our studio5.ksl.com and also share some snippets of this trend forecast. If anything we talked about was exciting to you, you can go review and plan and maybe get shopping and decorating along the way. Studio5.ksl.com.